मर के भी लाल तेरा मरेगा नहीं घोड़ी चढ़ के तो लाते हैं धुले हम सभी जादी से आशिकों ने किया देख ले ना उसे हम बिहार आएंगे ए वतन ए वतन हमको तेरी कसम तेरी राहू में जहा तक लुटा जाएंगे फूल क्या चीज है तेरे कदमों में हम भेंट अपने सरों की चढ़ा जाएंगे ए वतन ए वतन थैंक यू सो मच अशोक जी एंड अशोक जी मे आई इनवाइट यू टू प्लीज से अ फ्यू लाइंस आई नो दैट यू रिसाइट पोएट्री वुड यू बी ओके विद शेयरिंग इट विद अस i have allowed you to talk in case um uh, you would like to share a poem first thing i'll get to uh, sing a patriotic song if time permits yes of course okay. please go ahead please go okay. ahead uh, this is a uh, uh, ashok and alka from washington dc area uh and we are very happy <laughs> to welcome them to sing yes please go ahead guru re brahma guru re vishnu guru re devo maheshwara guru Alka ji please come close to the mic Ek minute Ha page kahan gaya hu to Jahan dal da can you hear me now Yes we can please go ahead जहाँ डाल डाल पर सोने की चिड़िया करती हूँ बसेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा जहा सत्य अहिंसा और धर्म का पग पग लगता डेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा ये धरती वो जहा ऋषि मुनि जपते प्रभु नाम की माला जहा हर बालक एक मोहन है और राधा एक एक बाला और राधा एक एक बाला जहा सूरज सबसे पहले आकर डाले अपना फेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा जहा गंगा जमुना कृष्ण और कावेरी बहती जाए जहा उत्तर दक्षिण पूर्व पश्चिम को अमृत पिलवाए ये अमृत पिलवाए 
के कहीं फल और फूल उगाए के सर कहीं बखेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा अलबेलो की इस धरती के त्योहार भी है अलबेले कहीं दिवाली होली के कहीं मेले होली के कहीं मेले जहाँ राग रंग और हंसी खुशी का चारों ओर है मेला वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा जहाँ आसमान से बातें करते मंदिर और शिवाले किसी नगर में किसी द्वार पर कोई न ताला डाले कोई न ताला डाले और प्रेम की बंसी जहाँ वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा जहाँ सत्य अहिंसा और धर्म पग पग लगता डेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा वो भारत देश है मेरा जय भारती जय भारती जय भारती जय भारती थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच अलका फ्रॉम वॉशिंगटन डीसी एरिया वी वर Uh, we are very happy you were able to join and that you also sang uh, this patriotic song thank you so much alka uh, from washington dc area and you, and, yeah, and uh, i'm going to just uh, i request everyone to please mute themselves if you are not speaking um so i'm going to just mute everybody um or you can just mute yourselves if if your mic is on and we are going to begin uh with the program after this beautiful song by alka dear friends greetings of peace uh from peace vigil my name is shireen and i welcome you to today's event celebrating the legacy of indian youth bhagat singh rajguru and sukhdev who were killed by the british colonial government in india 90 years ago they were hanged for their role in the struggle against the enslavement of india by the british government on 23rd march 1931 bhagat singh was born in a sikh family in punjab rajguru was born in a brahmin family in maharashtra and sukhdev was born in a valmiki dalit family in punjab what connection do the youth of today have with these revolutionaries why are we talking of a legacy what continuation are we referring to why are the young women and men of india on the front lines of the struggle against fascism in their country what is their message these are all the questions we will be discussing in today's event if you have any questions or comments during the presentations please use the chat box in zoom or the comments in facebook and also in youtube our main speaker is shaheed bhagat singh's nephew dr jagmohan singh who has always been active in the movement for justice in india from the fight against communalism to the fight for farmers rights indeed all these struggles are related we will also have the opportunity to hear samir dosani peace vigil's co-founder and a long time economic justice campaigner peace vigil's shine kapoor 
has a few quick reminders before we call upon Peace Vigil supporter Jasleen Kaur to introduce our much loved Dr. Jagmohan Singh. Over to you. Um, all right, thank you, Shireen. Welcome everyone from the West Coast of US to the Philippines. I'm Shine Kapoor from Peace Vigil. Peace needs all of us. We are delighted to have you and here are a few quick reminders for you. Peace Vigil works on peace education and you can help peace education work by subscribing to Peace Vigil channel on YouTube. It is free. Peace Vigil on YouTube regularly releases songs, theater, stories, lectures, and interviews. Please join our Facebook group, Good Things Happen Too. Please like Peace Vigil uh, page on Facebook. And finally, we like welcome your thoughts, feedback, ideas, and suggestions. So please write to us on info at peacevigil.net. I now call upon Peace Vigil supporter, Justine Kaur, to introduce Dr. Jagmohan Singh, who is the main speaker for today. Over to you, Justine. Hi, am I audible now? Absolutely, Jasleen, and welcome to the program. Thank you so much for um, like uh, welcoming me. And it is my honor to introduce Dr. Manmohan, uh, Jagmohan Singh. So uh, he was uh, born, uh, he's born uh, in 1944. Uh, Jagmohan Singh Ji is the son of uh, Bibi Amar Kaur, the younger sister of uh, Shaheed Bhagat Singh. And she was closely associated with her brother in his activities. Uh, she was imprisoned in 1945 for her forceful and hitting speeches against uh, British colonial rule and was sentenced for one and a half years. Her one uh, year old son, Jagmohan, was imprisoned with her. Thus, uh, he had the privilege of being cradled by many INA, uh, uh, INA soldiers who happened to be in Ambala Central Jail. His father was Sadar uh, Makhan Singh, a farmer and a social worker who followed the idols of his martyred brother-in-law. Uh, Jagmohan uh, Ji is an electrical engineer and a computer scientist. In 1975, he joined Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana faculty. Uh, in his engineering work, he uh, invented an electronic device for the farmers known as cell starter for tube wells. Uh, this is an innovative application of electronics which is successfully implemented at the farms. It is first of its kind, as he believed that research is for common benefit of farmers, so he refused to patent it, but instead made it, avail made it available in the public domain without any royalty. Uh, Jagmohan Ji was also the uh, founder director of information technology and industrial coordination of Punjab Technical University, Jalandhar, in 1995, and retired as professor and head of the Department of Computer Sciences in 2004. And uh, following in the footsteps of his uncle and mother, uh, Dr. Man uh, Jagmohan Singh has been committed to raising awareness in society and working for justice. Uh, he is involved in many rural education projects, including engineering and computer sciences. Uh, he was given responsibility by the associates of uh, Shaheed Bhagat Singh and his sister, P.B. Amar Kaur. Jagmohan Ji's mother to act as secretary of Shaheed Bhagat Singh Research Committee in 1981. The outcome of that uh, effort is a collection of original documents of freedom struggle, including first-hand information uh, from the living uh, Gadar party members. Uh, he has edited complete works of Shaheed Bhagat Singh and his uh, comrades and autobiography and speeches of Sardar Ajit Singh, uncle of uh, Shaheed Bhagat Singh. He also published a book named Desh Premi, Punjabi translation of Muhaban e Watan, uh, originally in Urdu, written by Sardar Rajit Singh and Sufi uh, Amba Parshad in 1908. He has also edited the jail notebook of Shaheed Bhagat Singh. Uh, he has websites where original photos and documents of Bhagat Singh and his uh, compatriots as well as freedom struggle have been placed for free public access. Uh, from the year uh, 1963, after attending the fifth anniversary celebrations of Gadar party and listening to Baba Sohan Singh Bakhna, 
the first president of gadar party he got the opportunity to very closely work under his guidance under the patronage of baba uh, bakna and mata uh, vidyavati uh, mother of shahid bhagat singh a constructive program called youth center with the families satkar uh, palan house as center was launched in 1966 it was a youth awareness and mutual health center uh, it also uh, made an effort to establish a link between the youth and living freedom fighters who were old but had so much to offer from their experience it inculcated a spirit of service initiative and confidence in the rural youth through working together for solutions to the problems in the community the group edited a magazine called lomi leh tomi leh uh, which focused on freedom struggle and shared original documents it also focused on ilkal uh, inculcating a uh, scientific temperament uh, in the post emergency phase of india the perpetual threat to democratic rights uh, particularly of weaker sections women and working people was realized he was part of an initiative by socially and intellectually concerned people to establish an association for democratic rights since 1978 he has been serving as general secretary of association for democratic rights the afdr has produced in depth studies on the state machinery failure in its duty as well as socially suppressive activities which coheres uh, democratic rights of the people in general and weaker sections peasants and workers in particular he was part of the uh, pudr and pucl team uh, which investigated 1984 delhi uh, uh, delhi massacre and uh, published who are guilty the rep report on this uh, massacre in punjabi and attracted severe attack of government the world human rights conference at vienna Uh, in 1993 adopted a program which include uh, afdr suggestion to make right of development as an assurance of human rights uh, the reports collected by afdr have been taken note by judicial bodies uh, he has established uh, shahid bhagat singh uh, centenary uh, foundation at khatkar kalan ancestral village of bhagat singh with family resources The foundation is to act as a, a nodal center for social actions based on vision of uh, martyrs and idols of freedom struggle. A learning and research center is being established at Khatkar Kalan. Uh, he has been instrumental in establishment of Sant Baba Bhag Singh University in rural area, which is dedicated for upliftment and empowerment of rural youth. Uh, currently, he has established. Uh, at ludhiana a library of, of his own collection of 30000 books uh, which is dedicated to his mother and is named bb amar kaur memorial public library thank you uh, so much uh, jasleen that was a great introduction and uh, you spoke so well this is jasleen's first time speaking in a peace vigil event she is our new supporter and she also recently wrote a great article on the farmers protests in delhi which is now on our website and also on our facebook page good things happen too jasleen kudos to you well done <laughs> um Just forgive me uh, for any mistakes that i have done in between not at all there were no mistakes you were fabulous and we encourage all our young supporters to participate Thank you so much, Jasleen. And if you yeah. welcome Jagmohan Singh ji. Uh, uh, thank you for Jasleen for introducing in a, such a good way and transferring the control to me. Uh, I'm thankful to Peace Vigil for the opportunity to discuss uh, about the legacy of Bhagat Singh and particularly how the youth. be it forward uh, so i was in a rush so i didn't have time to prepare the slide but we will have a systematical discussion on that uh, the because today i was at uh, khatkat kala so we had honored some young people the boys and girls who showed courage and all kind of uh, uh, 
hindrances were being created and the enthusiasm they show and they were given Vergasing Award. Uh, so that reminds me that uh, this movement of the farmers have brought up a new culture and culture of uh, reliving our past legacies and learning from that. So now the question which uh, virtually faces all of us is, how do we prepare, the youth prepare for the future duty of taking over the charge? The girls have taken over and they are running a news uh, magazine from the border area. It is not a border, but it is a Delhi uh, outer area. Farmers are uh, there uh, for the last 100, well, mostly 10 days. Uh, they are uh, taking out one magazine called Karti Dharti. Actually, this word has uh, fascinated me because we had uh, in our colloquial uh, language Karta Dharta, the person in charge of everything. But now that uh, girls have taken over the charge, of their own matters, along with the matters of the society. This is what actually Bhagat Singh imagined, that the time when the youth, both girls and boys, uh, take up uh, the duty of uh, standing for the liberation, or the lib then that era of he will start. So in that way, uh, this is uh, providing as that opportunity. And now uh, taking clue, so I was just wanted that do we just realize uh, that when Bhagat Singh and BK Dutt walked into the central Vyas, what were their age? Can we guess? We know about Bhagat Singh, he was 21 and a half because we know he was born in 1907. But what was the age of uh, B.K. Dutt? Another very strong man of conviction. He was just 18 and a half. So, so that actually wondered me. And there is a very interesting article by B.K. Dutt that you always have seen us as uh, uh, revolutionaries, firebrand revolutionaries. But, and that is which has been shaking the people's mind. Uh, and that is that uh, one of the uh, saying which goes on that no one uh, wants Bhagat Singh in his family. He wants only in the neighbor. Uh, but that is because he said that uh, they don't understand the spirit which we created and how do we reach that. So that article is a very interesting article, uh, the philosophy of uh, a revolutionary. And he says, that because we own weaknesses as human beings and we trained ourselves uh, with all kind of uh, uh, those strengths which are there. Uh, so that uh, is how do we do that? And when I just, uh, because this was a hundredth uh, year of tragedy, we all know about Jalewala tragedy, but we, uh, there is another tragedy which followed two years after that, and that was part of the policy of the British, uh, so that such kind of if take place and it is between the people itself, then it will give an impression that this is a, a natural phenomena, nobody is to be blamed. So that uh, massacre was in the birthplace of Guru Nanak, Nankana Sahib, which is now in Pakistan. And uh, one nine six were killed, burned, and one of their leader was actually sitting on the uh, that uh, book we call Shri Granth Sahib, and he was killed while he was taking uh, a kind of uh, reading out of that, and he was killed while sitting there. So the Bhagat Singh virtually it came to his mind that actually he was just fourteen. So he questioned it that the real battle against these uh, priests who have taken over these religious, uh, historical religious places is 
because they don't want the knowledge to be transferred to the people. They just wanted the knowledge. They wanted something to stimulate their soul and uh, then move. But they don't. And, and then he said, how do we I go it? And at the age of 14, he started learning Gurmukhi because the Punjabi language was not uh, in the curricula. It was either taught in the Gurdwaras it was a personal matter, but not as a, a community education. So he learned himself. And as my mother told me that after some time, about few months, he came and he just inquired that uh, Bibi uh, Amarova, Amar Korvar, her name, Amro, what are you reading? She said, I am reading a selection out of that Granth Sahib. There are few things, selected things which are read. He said, I have actually read the whole of it, the idea which is there. And that idea is which Guru Tegh Bahadur, before his martyrdom, sent it to Guru Gobind Singh, who was just nine. And he said that there is a, a Gur Mantar, that that is the main thing to be learned, is that you, Punjabi, that you that means if you are weak uh, and then uh, you are in bondage and you cannot do, then the only thing is that you will pray to the uh, God to, for help. But that is not the... And then he gives the answer. What is the answer to this situation? Is bal hua, bandhan shoote, sab kush ho tapai, nanak, tumre haath mein, because in poetry, uh, this uh, Nanak is used. But he says that if you are empowered, Balwan, if you are empowered, then all kind of bondages will be broken. And Nanak advises you that you have to become your own guide and your own assistant. So, so Dhaka Singh said that that is virtually means that we must empower ourselves against uh, by removing all kind of weaknesses which are there. And when you already read him, and that is one of his uh, major uh, advisement that we must uh, uh, try to locate what is the weakness, and that is applied to the society also. When he talks about uh, communal feelings, or he says that our struggle is well, having two sides. One is fighting against our own weaknesses because those weaknesses are exploited by our own people as well as by the enemy. So he said that that is that, and this is if we study that they become such a strong young man with a conviction and the understanding also was because of, they worked with themselves. And, and this is uh, finally, I think, it comes up uh, with his younger brother's message, which was only of three words and then few couple, uh, he, because he was, Kultar Singh was younger brother, he was 12 years old, and he said that three things to be remembered is take care of your health, which virtually means good nutrition and exercise, because you built your health against resistance, and that's what exercise is. And then he say, be courteous. Never lose courage. That don't dishearten. If you are not succeeded once, try it again, again and again. But don't get disheartened. Go on uh, making your attempt. So third was that you must work hard to learn. And that work hard to learn is that you try to understand the basic idea so that you can recreate when the situation comes. And that's what he was doing. So this was a preparatory issue which which uh, Bhagat Singh virtually had, and and I think one very interesting thing which uh, just uh, came to my mind that uh, my mother Bibi Amar Kaur was three years younger, and these two young men, and and one of the fear we have is fear of darkness, and they were trained by their father because they had a house in Lahore which was uh, the lone uh, house there was no buildings around that, but there was all kind of uh, uh, plantation over there. And both of them will be sent out in the darkness of the night 
one on the one corner and another on the other corner and father said that you will move from one corner to the other and then when you reach there you will call me because from you taken over the power of the fear or you are just still fear so that type of exercises uh, and i think th these are the exercises which were given to them and my mother was she used to even uh, travel in the night lonely uh, and then jump over the wall of the hospital to meet his younger brother kulbir singh who was on hunger strike in a hospital but fully uh, under police so so that type of thing i think these are simple things that that is the the those weaknesses how you take uh, over them so so that that is also makes it that we are not just as so we have to prepare ourselves for the situation which is to come and that is what bhagat singh's next message is that you must be create a, a a kind of confidence in yourself and that confidence is only thing which will make you survive in the crisis and that confidence can how do that comes in that he says that if you just take assistance of something and that is what is comes to that even at times the god becomes a, a kind of weakness for us because we shift our weight of instead of dealing with the crisis we shift our weight to to this uh, uh, assistance and that is which is the biggest weakness and that is that i try to make myself uh, uh, confident so that whenever crisis is there i only go by the uh, reason behind that and another very important uh, uh, thing which uh, is there is a revolutionary passion the uh, bhagat singh uses this word quite a bit of time that means once you are convinced then you continue working without uh, looking for uh, any kind of return but at the same time with the same zeal which you have uh, so that uh, the cause is served and uh, and you are always working for that zeal so so this is this revolutionary passion is to be understood that uh, we once do something but we have to continue because it is out of your conviction for uh, this and that needs to change your beliefs also because the set of belief which is given to us need to be uh, modified and it is a, i got a very interesting book which we would like to share uh, that is the science of thought that how positive thinking actually creates the whole biochemical process in our mind and then the memory is uh, so, so so this is continuous working and that is what bk dat writes that uh, how do we were able to face such many hardships they have 116 days of hunger strike with all kind of the odds and then they were also they were so tied to each other that police wanted to create lot of misconceptions about each other need to bhagat singh they will say that uh, this is what uh, bk dat is saying he is already a prover why don't you tell and the same thing they will convey to him but they had such a mutual trust that they didn't break with that all kind of uh, things so uh, to to the point is that to, to carry forward uh, that revolutionary zeal we need a complete understanding and that understanding is on the basis of well, scientific thinking which bhagat singh emphasizes the scientific thinking is to understand everything by its cause to understand why it is so like uh, this these days the, these young people have understood that as the cause of whole misery which has been created now which is uh, there on the farmers and the rural worker is because of the policy which is followed and that policy which we call new liberalism uh, and how do it affects uh, and the second is that the whole process in which instead of giving you job so that you can earn now they only invite you to take the loan and and then be there 
another very important uh, point which Bhagat Singh and his colleagues brought was realism. Because when he wrote in one of his article that realism became my cult. Actually, cult word is usually used for something. If somebody is in some cult, you cannot discuss with it. That is the discussion ends if you, you have adopted a cult or a kind of strong beliefs. But he said that the point where our discussion ends is the realism, the reality. So if the reality is uh, there, you, you have to then understand it and change it. Uh, so it is uh, uh, a realism uh, which is brought and then we understand that realism is because until you understand the reality, you cannot change it. That is why one of the uh, big weakness in the Indian society created by the, the Hindutva is that it is a Maya Jal, it is a mirage, uh, so you cannot do anything or you can create a bigger mirage to contain this one. So that is uh, which is uh, there. So it is, uh, well, this part that uh, when realism replaces, that is what reality is. Like uh, now you will find that all these governments which have a fascistic tendencies, they don't allow or let you have the actual information. The data is being manipulated or the data is being not put into the common thing because the, it is the data which will tell us the real situation. Like uh, this day, somebody well, and the, in parliament, there are two type of questions. One is starred question. The starred question is where the minister has to reply on the floor. Well, he will read his answer at the floor and give answer to the supplementaries. But another trick is that you ask just for a, a normal unstarred question, which means it is just prepared by the office and the information is given to you. The other day in Rajya Sabha, the agriculture minister was asked how much World Bank loan you have taken. So, so that World Bank loan on the five years and then the term figure when came out, it shows that in the last year and this year, the so much of uh, loan in the name of agriculture has been taken. And that uh, gives you the answer that why this government is so insistent in making those NTPs and anti-people policies and they remain because so much money has been taken on the loan for that. So that, that is... So Bhagat Singh, and that is why when he chooses his action, he is more on a realistic base. That And then second part of the realism is that you don't go into the ethics of the things. You go into the effect which is created by your actions. And that is where Bhagat Singh was, or his comrades were very particular, that you just don't just create a kind of situation or a action but you have to see how much your action gives you feedback, uh, feedback on that. And that he learned from the word experience. And in one of the words which he was using, uh, uh, Bhagat Singh and BK Dutt in, in their uh, assembly case statement, he said that we humbly submit to be the serious student of history, the conditions of our people and their aspirations. So that means and, and this reminds us that there was uh, one word used by Subhash when he was 17, that I want to be a, a perfect uh, human being. And incidentally, uh, I was reading Malusa Bhag Singh's uncle Saji Singh's last message when he came back to India in uh, April 47. His last message to the youth was, be a complete man, a human being. And what is this? complete human being. And that was actually the clue was given by this uh, quote from Bhagat Singh that we know the history, we know the present conditions, and we know what the future uh, aspiration people have and what should be met. But uh, uh, Subhash actually gave a very interesting uh, uh, definition. He say that you have to understand the whole world history, that is experience of the history, 
what does you learn from that and if you find bhagat singh he of learning he learns from that what are the rules of uh, uh, this uh, uh, historical process and then he say that today means what the world is going through what type of experiments the people are uh, taking and uh, what is the result of uh, those uh, people's effort which are going on so you have not to only see your society but you have to see other societies also because they have their crisis they are trying to solve that crisis and it is very interesting that subhash addressed uh, uh, the bombay corporation and it is very interesting he said i have been to the europe to understand how do they solve their problems but i guess i learned that the socialism as they have applied in the uh, eastern uh, in the europe is that in, in municipal corporation you take care of all the citizens not the selected citizens interest and you work for that and and that is a kind of uh, socialism which is in practice and that is what bhagat singh says that uh, his question is that the problem which is created by the british rule is to be addressed let us not get bothered that it is by a a country by a particular type of race but it is a problem which is created by them and that is inequality and to resolve that inequality there is only one method which is practically uh, uh, which has worked is socialism so so that is uh, the subhash is also so that that is how you learn from other whole experience and the third one is what is the future how do the things will take shape like uh, from the history we learn and that is why bhagat singh says again and again that the all empires are destroyed but the ideas are not destroyed like the revolutionary passion which is created by the french revolution as a equality liberty and fraternity that is the the society is to be based on these three basic values so that passion has continued and now some of the historians of uh, france virtually found that after going through the whole of the world experience they found that bhagat singh provides that revolutionary passion of carrying it forward and then when you leave it you put a so much momentum in the society that it continues doing the work ahead uh, so and the basis of all this what is the motivated and that reminds me my own search because at one time i had a kind of in my mind a question came do i take bhagat singh to be a great man because he is my maternal uncle is it because of that because you are closer you look at grandeur but where does he stand in the whole process of the history so i actually happened to meet nalini kishor guha who was a bengal revolutionary he was one of the person along with arvindu ghosh who brought the revolutionary zeal at that time and has established anushilan samiti so i met him uh, he was just uh, up to, uh, about 85 or so but he has come all the way from calcutta to inaugurate uh, bhagat singh statue in mirzapur it is in eastern up i said dada what makes bhagat singh different because if intellectual class is there the bengalis have produced lot of intellectuals if uh, the bravery is concerned no one can match uh, jatin bagha jatendra mukherjee uh, so i said that what makes uh, that you have also come but there was a very wonderful question he said that in the beginning because in 1900s there was lot of frustration being created within us by the british because instead of re- meeting the needs of the people but all the conditions they were virtually divided the bengal on the communal basis there was all kind of fear which was being created because all kind of uh, uh, sentences were being given on very minor things so th- at that moment the question with us was how to create fearlessness in the people and our young revolutionaries like uh, uh, khudiram bose and kanaiyalal dat came forward 
to sacrifice and create a environment of fearlessness in the youth but he said that when bhagat singh and his comrades came on the political scene the motivating force for them was the love of their people love for the movement of the conditions and that is what bhagat singh say we love the humanity it is not only contained to indian people but it is towards the whole human race uh, which is there and that is what becomes very important that if you just go back and see when fascism was defeated in german spain and and uh, italy what was the conclusions uh, did uh, were drawn the very first one was that no citizen is to be taken as uh, their own uh, that is a country the he is only belongs to the country and and the rulers have all power to do whatever they want to do with his life and that is a question which we now find that whenever there is a criticism of uh, uh, inhumanness and uh, uh, violation of human rights it is said that it is our personal matter it is no longer personal matter because fascism used that technique to have such a, a kind of misery and massacre in german italy and all that and the outcome was the char- universal charter of human rights that is consider the human being as one uh, of the human society and and for that he has to have a minimum rights and those rights are that uh, he must have a dignified living and that is why it becomes important to see that uh, in our society around us are people living with dignity or by one reason or the other by the caste or the creed or anything they they are be made uh, secondary citizens so this was uh, uh, a very interesting aspect that uh, bhagat singh and uh, the even after even in uh, assembly also they said we love human being mal humanity and and it is we are not here to just uh, do something uh, like damaging or violent but because you will not listen to us until we make a loud voice and that loud voice was created by the smoke bombs in the central assembly so so that is that you create a situation but the situation is to take your ideas to the people and as uh, uh, niti nair one of the uh, scholar in uh, virginia she said that bhagat singh and his com- comrades actually won over by a non violent mean it was their self determination which was shown by them in the long hunger strike in which one of their comrade jatin das actually died and i just found uh, a a recording video recording of the time we learned it that there were 7 lakh people traveling with him when he was uh, the, his body was taken to calcutta and from havda station it was taken to kalibadi so there was 7 lakh people with him and that changed the whole scenario of thinking in because netaji subhash was there to receive him because he has worked with netaji subhash as uh, uh, one of the major of the bengal volunteers a unit which was established by netaji so so that that is that uh, the motivating force was humanism and they were ready to take all kind of odds on them and stand it as a perfectly being so so that is that is very important aspect of it that you learned and that is what uh, a, they say the revolutionary is he is not well thinking of his his own class or what he thinks of the whole uh, human race as as such so jagmohan so singh ji um, jagmohan singh ji sorry to interrupt because uh, we yes. are reaching close to the end of one hour i just wanted to raise a couple of issues one yes. is that you know you very rightly pointed out that it's not violence that they are doing they they drop the bomb in order for the people to hear what they were trying to say but also i'd like to mention that you know kennedy once said that those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable 
and mm-hmm. uh, you it it looks like in in india also uh, most of the activists the young activists who are now in jail or were jailed earlier under uapa or other uh, uh, draconian acts they have all all tried to be peaceful um, but they are being pushed to this this um, corner uh where we don't know what will happen uh, tomorrow but they have all tried to be peaceful i will uh, name a few people sharjeel imam umar khalid ishrat jahan safura zarkar meet miran haider disha ravi recently nadeep kaur devangna kalita these are all people uh, we have tried to feature in our poster so you know what we would like you to tell us uh, jag mohan singh ji is that do you see a similarity between the way the laws or the institutions were used to put fear in the minds of the youngsters and arrest them and and basically make life difficult for them and their families and the laws that we have now thank you uh shindi you are very right actually uh, bhagat singh once said that we youth have to have a 3s motto that is uh, serving suffering and sacrifice so so that is what the youth imbibes and you rightly said this youth has also gone through all kind of uh, uh, psychological and physical torture and that is what the state do this was this is actually to me it looks that most of the policy of uh, colonialism is being tried now so creating that and the, like shiv kumar is one worker who who has been trying to organize the and and he has been tortured like uh, anything whereas the international anti torture uh, there is a covenant on against torture but the state machinery try to create a fear psyche and you are right whatever that court is but it also is that create frustration and once a frustrated youth acts then it is much easier to contain them and that is what is happening that with all the 115 days of uh, kisan satyagraha and uh, so actively involving youth in doing constructive work they do their uh, watchman's duty they supply give all kind of traffic control they they do duties of keeping order keeping uh, health healthy environment and all that type of things so that's definitely that disturb the uh, the ruler much more then a, a violent boy because that is easier for him to contain that and bhagat singh also said that uh, the broader n- movements are to be non violent because the whole of the mass when come up that's a so so that is uh, one of the state uh, thing and it, they are they are trying to create all kind of even this is a young people but for the political people they have a another kind of blackmailing that some file of the youth of one of our chief justice were taken out and then he was exploited by that that in the age of 18 you did something like that uh, which can be now exposed so so that that is uh, uh, what uh, this this is uh, the the attitude but what we were discussing is how do young they have to understand that they, there is a ground in which you are the winner and that is what our present movement now has made it clear that we are winner till we have mal a collective peaceful uh, and determined uh, battle but once it gets step and that is what they try to shift it also on a pseudo uh, form uh, in in one of the day uh, to make it look like a violent which was not because if uh, there is a uh, the violence was created by putting and and people didn't uh, damage the the government or public property but they wanted to do that which they failed to do so the, that is if we take it like uh, uh, the new liberalism was pushed through chile with all kind of uh, uh, torture on the youth the whole of the stadiums were filled by the dead bodies there is a interesting film on that also so so naturally the state is more feared if there is a 
determined. And that's what Bhagat Singh actually, we learn from him also. That that is what shaked the British was his hunger strike, which was Mala and, and I think that is where he complimented those feeling that whenever Mala, you, you fight with your willpower, that is much stronger. And that willpower virtually defeated to virtually go away with their uh, judicial system, which was exposed. And, and it was one sided game. And they said, you have already decided what do you, why this drama is to be there. So I think uh, uh, that is there. And the last point which uh, I want to make is that there is a culture in the home which is which builds up also. And and like uh, uh, there is a open culture uh, in in a, a family, particularly in Bhagat Singh's making, that uh, he has all kind of cultural roots which are flowing. The cultural roots which uh, go back to uh, but what they learn from that is that you have to stand with everybody's uh, stand with the people where they are fighting and then they have uh, uh, a culture of one movement which came that how to make young people stand on their own which is called Kuka movement and that was the principle which was taken from Guru Gobind Singh which I told that Guru Gobind Singh built a new mindset which he said that my one Sikh can fight with lakhs of people because he's so determined. He so uh, knows that uh, he can, he is fighting for a cause and he will stand for that. And then there was a culture from Baba Bulle Shah because Saji Singh was married in Kasur and our uh, Nani Ji, Malbhag Singh's auntie, Mal, she came from uh, Kasur and brought all that Sufism with her. So then they had a uh, good things from Arya Smaj also, that which was do away with the untouchability, educate the girls, and then also look for your, uh, that uh, you, your good lies with the other people's good. And that is why in the home, there was uh, uh, 22 orphans who are being taken care by our uh, Bhagat Singh's mother and father and well, uh, his, uh, his uncles. So, so that, that, is, that is definitely, well, we look for those values in the home, which uh, are virtually gives you a platform to think broader, think clearly, think scientifically, and then interpret the things by knowing that. And that is which uh, is the way of uh, being contributing by the youth. Uh, and that is what uh, uh, I think the legacy of Bhagat Singh and his comrade is that they stood with it. They stood with the, the scientific uh, thinking. And the one thing which was very interesting and last thing I will say that while well, making a comment on Gandhiji, he said, Gandhiji is a very good person because he is a philanthropist. He want that good of the society should take place. But the basic principle of bringing good to the society is that you must have a scientifically oriented, a dynamic social force that is who can understand. And every youth has to understand that the cause behind the thing, if he understand that cause, he is determined to remove that causes and bring uh, the next uh, stage of development in his own life as well as in the society. So with this, I will close my presentation. Thank you so much, Jagmohan Singh Ji. As always, it's a pleasure to hear you and learn from you. Um, uh, yes, so hi everyone, once again, this is Shireen from Peace Vigil. Um, so, uh, you know, we all heard what Dr. Jagmohan Singh said, and now we're going to try and connect all the situation that is um, happening right now. Um, I will uh, point out a couple of things. One is that the people who are in jail today, the youngsters or the youngsters who were uh, victimized, um, even though they are out of jail now, for example, uh, Disha Ravi, uh, they are all people who have gone beyond the 
the constraints of caste, religion, language barrier, regional barrier in India. And youngsters often do that. And that's the spirit that, that uh, fascists try to kill by homogenizing everything. This is what happened even uh, in, in Nazi Germany. And uh, uh, the, the spirit of any young person or a child is to be uh, wanting to make friends. That's how humanity works. As a peace educator, I can assure you that uh, it is so much easier to work with children and young people because they don't come with the biases that older people have. Uh, they are open to making friends. Um, they don't worry too much about the barriers of language even. They are able to overcome those barriers. And they certainly don't look at people in terms of uh, religion or caste, they, they, they are more open. Especially in universities, this is possible in government universities like Jawaharlal Nehru University or in institutions like Jamia University because the fee at least until recently was quite low, which meant that people from all strata could come and study. Uh, even religious background didn't matter and therefore people were able to make friends. So you will see that a lot of people who were in jail or now are out of jail were, but were put in jail, the youngsters, they came from these universities. Uh, they understood the pain of each other. The anti-CAA movement, for instance, uh, had a lot of students in it. So the, the reason why youngsters are targeted by fascist governments is because they do not fall into the trap of communal and caste identity, identity politics. And um, so we must really understand the strength of the youth in this. It's not just about, uh, you know, this youth wanting to do something or the, the youth uh, having all the spirit of, of uh, you know, as spirit and energy to do something, but it goes beyond that. Uh, youth are more open, youth are uh, more, um, you, youth want to make friendships. And that is uh, a danger to fascism. And now I call upon um, Sami Dosani of Peace Vigil to, to talk. I won't give a very lengthy um, introduction to Samir, but I will tell you a, a few things about him, uh, which I think you will find interesting. Um, Sami Dosani, uh, whose work on the impact of economic policies on the lives of the so-called common people has made him a celebrated activist of economic justice internationally, is our co-founder and we are very fortunate to have him in Peace Vigil. He headed the 50 Years is Enough US Network for Global Economic Justice and the NGO Forum on the Asian Development Bank. He also worked with Amnesty International ActionAid International and Oxfam International in various capacities. He is widely published globally and co-founder of Peace Vigil He Is that I have told you about. He's also a health and nutrition co coach. Samir Dosani, uh, the mic is yours. Thank you very much. And now I think it's uh, your turn to make me host. Oh, okay. Uh, I will try and do what Jocelyn did. Um, so I go to Samir. Yes, sorry, today we are having more difficulties than uh, any time we've had. Uh, yes. Thank you so I much. I think I've done the right thing. Okay. No, 100%, Pleasure. you have 100% done the right thing. So uh, I just wanted to say a few things. First of all, thanks so much uh, to Professor Jagmohan Singh. This has been another great discussion and I will urge uh, everyone who's watching this to go ahead and look at our YouTube channel and to see um, the other talks that Professor Jagmohan has given. Really, they are, they are truly great, especially the ones about 1857 and uh, Bhagat Singh's family. I think these are truly amazing discussions and we are very lucky to have had his, uh, his interventions on these subjects. Um, Today, I'd just like to say a few words on this topic of uh, youth and change. So, uh, and, and especially what's going, with special reference to what's going on in India right now. So I'll just remind everyone that every government 
even the most authoritarian government must listen to its people, right? This is understood. You, even um, a fascist government cannot go against the will of all of its people all the time. It will fail eventually. Uh, and the youth are in the lead when it comes to protest because the youth are unwilling, often unwilling to accept the chains that they can see being made for them. And uh, to quote another famous person, those, many of those people, many of those young people, they really at a certain point understand that they have nothing to lose except their chains. And sometimes those chains haven't even come in yet. They will come in the future in the form of some kind of work, some kind of um, wage slavery, again, to use um, more Marxist terms. Um, in democracies, the idea is that you have an independent press. You also allow the right to protest and the society will decide how to change, whether to accept those protests or not, right? Elections are a part of this in a democratic system, but they're only one part. The democratic process is meant to be much broader than just every five years you go to an election, right? In an authoritarian society, so these are non-democratic societies, the government has a stick, a lati, right? Uh, but there are limits to the extent to which the government will beat its own population. Eventually, if enough people rebel, the government must cave in. It has no choice. Uh, in so-called democratic societies, the government loses the stick and therefore creates uh, systems of thought control. So I'm referring here to the work of um, Edward Herman and Noam Chomsky and their landmark, I believe it's 1988, their book, Manufacturing Consent. Uh, by now, I think this is proven to be one of the more um, demonstrable facts in, uh, in Western societies that control over media, control of propaganda machine is a very important part of how um, so-called democracies function in practice. So that's my first premise. The second premise that I'd like to talk about is most governments today are not really democratic. And in fact, they no longer even aspire to democratic values. So in that, in that dichotomy that I've given, so the authoritarian versus the democratic, um, with the democratic having a tendency towards propaganda and thought control, most governments today are not even democratic. Uh, so complete control of the press is one part, and that's been in place for some time in India. Uh, I myself have had the unfortunate privilege of watching the slow and steady and sometimes very quick decline of the Indian press. When I first started traveling to India in the 1990s, there was still, um, I would say, a, a thought-provoking, um, you know, press culture, and that has really almost gone away. This is again, um, old Chomsky uh, and Herman manufacturing consent kind of stuff. Um, another part of this process is um, turning against its own people in a more confrontational way. So this is turning to the authoritarianism. Now, the phenomenon that we're seeing right now is old, but it's also new. It's old in the sense that governments have turned against dissidents, even in so-called democratic societies for many, many years. So right after World War II, we have the Red Scare in USA. I was just doing some research on this for another um, purpose. I saw that the first sort of anti-communist um, sort of red baiting legislation in the US came in in 1948. Uh, so that's before McCarthy, before these things happened already immediately after World War II, we have this fear of communism. When the communists remember are the reason that they were able to defeat uh, Hitler. Fascism only failed because the Soviet Union was willing to sacrifice or ended up sacrificing so many people. So uh, the excuse, so I'm now speaking specifically about the United States, the excuse for the Red Scare, the excuse for McCarthyism was the Soviet Union, but the victims had absolutely nothing to do with the Soviet Union. So the biggest victims of the anti-communist frenzy in the United States were, were who? Were the Black Panther Party and the American Indian Movement. These, I would argue, were movements led by young people, undoubtedly led by young people, as many movements are, but they were aimed at decolonization within a settler colonial society. So it was targeting a founding hypocrisy within the society. The words, all men are created equal, exists in the US Declaration of Independence. Um, uh, and it's, the U.S. Declaration of Independence is not just the founding document in uh, the U.S., but it is supposedly the founding document of all Western democracies. Remember the American Revolution, the U.S. Revolution is 1776. Uh, the French Revolution is not until a few years after that, right, 1789. So this was really the model. Um, but this all men are created equal, even the language is problematic, obviously, today. 
Um, but it was a time even within men, so that's only 50% of the society, but only white men who owned property were considered equal enough to even vote, right? Or to participate in democracy. So the vast majority of the population, even at that time, is left out. Uh, though technically now, you know, 200 years later, equal rights have been granted to women, to black people, to Native Americans, and so on. We all know that the idea that uh, all people are created equal is still nothing more than, I, an, than an idea. It has not been put into practice, at least not yet, right? So that's the old story, and it's one that we're used to telling. The difference today in the United States and in many other countries, including India, is that governments or political forces within the government are actively encouraging right-wing extremists. Some of those will also be young people, um, but many of them are, are certainly older. Um, so those are, are people who are arguing for a return to a more classical form of colonialism in the case of the US, right? I'll talk, it's something slightly different in the case of India. I'll talk about that in a second. So we saw this on January 6th in the US Capitol um, when a group largely led by white nationalists and in favor of the then president Donald Trump were allowed to occupy the Capitol building. It's unclear the extent to which these people were aided by elements within the state, including police officers, but it is clear that they did have some such aid. In fact, today I was just reading that uh, the wife of an FBI agent has been arrested uh, in connection with that, those events. I haven't had time to, to read into the details. That's just happened in the past few hours. Um, but elements within the state, including police officers, did support them. And of course, they were egged on by a president who was lying through his teeth and refused to denounce the violent protesters. In the age of social media, those people, so the right-wing nationalists, the, the white nationalists in, in the United States, um, they can set up channels of misinformation into which many susceptible people may be tempted to enter and from which it's very hard to leave, right? So this is the so-called fake news bubbles and so on. Um, in India, much of the social media misinformation seems to be directly tied to the RSS and to the BG BJP, and sometimes maybe even to the government itself. Uh, my third premise is that the Indian government is very much in this mold. In fact, the Indian government has no interest in democracy. So here I think we're distinguishing between um, you know, previous Indian governments and the current government. So I'm, I'm speaking specifically about the current BJP-led government. Um, here, I'd encourage everyone to go on to our YouTube channel and listen to our recent talk with Ram Punyani, especially the question and answer. Uh, Ram Punyani there talks about what the real motivations of the Sangh Parivar are, and he talks about the restoration of casteism, patriarchy, North Indian dominance over the rest of India, and a destruction of the composite culture. What Nehru called Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first prime minister, he referred to this as the Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb. Um, and they're doing this in order to create a strange kind of kingdom that never really existed in history. Uh, for the purposes of today, let's call it the Ravan Raj, uh, to distinguish it from what they, they call it themselves, Ram Raj. Uh, but uh, you know, let's, you, let's keep that for a different kind of Ram Raj, the one that uh, Mahatma Gandhi sort of expressed and, and that we've discussed in some detail in previous uh, webinars. Um, but I like the term Ravan Raj because if the vision is ever attained, for some people, it may be the heaven represented by the rule of Ram. But for others, it will be the hell that Sita experienced when she was abducted by Ravan. Uh, let me also say that I know that Ravan is a mixed figure, that he is also seen in the good king in some parts of India uh, or in Sri Lanka. Uh, let me not enter into this debate right now. Uh, the North Indian, uh, the people who are saying, you know, Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan, the Sangh Parivar kind of people, um, they see Ram as good and Ravan as bad. So let's just keep to that dichotomy for now and call this Ravan Raj. Uh, since the state or these forces within the state have no interest or even a pretense in democracy, they are not really threatened when, say, Muslims or Adivasis or even Punjabi farmers mobilize against them. In fact, they welcome the conflict. They don't think that, you know, to, to imagine ourselves in their shoes for a second, they don't imagine that all the Muslims are going to just jump in the sea uh, willingly, right? Nor do they imagine that they'll be able to confine the Muslims into little mini Pakistans, as they call it, um, as they've done in Ahmedabad and other Gujarati cities. They won't be able to do that without force, without the riots, without some threat of violence to force the Muslims to be, quote unquote, in their place, right? They want to fight. They are mobilized for violence. They are ready for it. And they will characterize all protest as violence, whether that protest is peaceful or, or not. 
and they will suppress any protest with violence, right? This is all clear. What stops them, and I think it's the only thing that can stop them, is when those who they think should be welcoming a return to the Ravan Raj, namely high caste Hindus, when those people are seen to be expressing their support for farmers, for Muslims, for Dalits, and so on, right? And it is for this reason that the young people today are so important and the youth movements in India can be and already have been extremely powerful. When you have people uh, in JNU, to give the example of about a year ago, uh, when you had protests in JNU over the increase in fees. Now, some of those protests were being led by people who could in fact have paid the fees. They were speaking on behalf of their brothers and sisters who they knew could not pay the increased fees, right? So that's a form of solidarity that these other people don't know how to deal with. They don't have a space in their worldview for a Hindu who befriends a Muslim, for a Brahmin who befriends, befriends a Dalit, for a man who speaks out in defense of a woman who's been raped. These classifications, so gender for classifications, caste classifications are real. You know, they, they're actually natural uh, in Ravan Rajya, right? Um, but the way, but, you know, in the, in, so um, what do I mean by it's real? In the way that the division between a horse and a giraffe is quantifiable, right? You can do genetic studies, a horse and a giraffe cannot crossbreed, right? So they are different species, right? In the same way, they believe that the difference between a Dalit and a Brahmin is a natural distinction, is something that actually exists in the natural. It's not a social construct. construct. And if I or anyone else with a bit of common sense were to point out that that's nonsense, there is no difference at a biological level, whether DNA, DNA difference or whatever, between a Dalit and the Brahmin, uh, they'll just say, look, uh, you're in the 21st century, we're talking about God, right? Your technology isn't yet as good as what we know from the Manusmriti. And eventually your technology will catch up, eventually you will find out, and we'll be able to measure the natural difference between Brahmins and Dalits, just as we can now measure the difference between a horse and a giraffe, right? So <clears throat> to this worldview, the youth movements, and especially movements that come out of universities are extremely dangerous. Why? Because these are places where the caste divisions have largely been eroded. So now I'm thinking of friends of mine over the years. So I, there's an example of a child who, you know, a young man by the time I met him, had a very sheltered childhood, grew up in a, a very sort of elite suburb of Hyderabad, had never really had contact with people who didn't speak his language, which was Telugu, um, and had never been really in a multi-caste or multi, certainly not a multi-religious place. Uh, but he goes to university, right? So the, the, the parents of the child, no matter how parochial, they want that child to go to the best possible uh, university, right? In his case, that meant going abroad. He was in the University of Maryland. Um, but in other places, it might mean going to institutions like IIT, IIM, JNU, Delhi University, and so on. In such institutions, one will necessarily be exposed to other worldviews. One will make friends, hopefully, with other kinds of people. One may even learn to speak other languages. Um, some of those individuals will also be drawn into student organizing, even though they may be from upper caste or upper class backgrounds. So when you have a truly multi-religious and multi-ethnic movement of young people demanding their rights in accordance with the constitution, so not the Manu um, the, the Sangh Parivar has no answer. They may try to imprison the leaders of such movements or they will try to silence others, perhaps with a blow to the head as happened to the, the young uh, president of the JNU Student Union. Um, but if they attack too hard, they risk alienating the very elites that they depend on to build the Raman Raji, right? So to do all this work of casteism and communalism requires resources, requires catering to the needs of certain class and certain castes. And if the children of those people, enough of them are speaking up against that, that's gonna be a problem, right? So in the end, youth organizing is also how we will change the opinion of the older generation. When a person's children are willing to stand up against hatred and injustice, and when those children are being vilified by the so-called uh, Godi media for their, courage, for their courage and for their courageous stands, then even their own parents, who probably were not sympathetic to many of these things when their children started to agitate, those parents 
can come to understand the dangers of Ram and Raja and begin to take the side, uh, begin to take their side in the struggle following their children. The children will lead and the parents will follow. follow. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's helpful and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you so much, Samir. We are now going to have two songs. Uh, we were going to have one, but uh, we have a request from our supporter from uh, DC area, Ashok, uh, for a song, Mera uh, Rang De Basanti Chola, that Bhagat Singh and his comrades used to sing. Uh, Neelima Sharma ji from Nishant Natimanch, if it is possible for you to, to sing that song, that will be great. I will give you a few minutes to prepare Neelima ji if it is possible. Before that, I would like uh, Jagmohan Singh ji to tell us about this song uh, because it has a historical significance. Uh, Jagmohan ji, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the song? Uh, yes, it is it's very interesting because it happened in the Kakori case that there was a Basant Panchmi when their day of uh, going to the court. So actually, Ramprasad Bismal organized that everybody should have uh, those uh, uh, those kind of... Uh, Sorry, Jagmohan Jing, please, please go ahead and turn on your video. I made you the host again. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it is better to have co-host than shifting the host, because that that facility is there. So say, then... say, no, we made a mistake this time, but but please. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this song was actually just improvised when they had a basant in uh, because basant comes in the January month, so they were being taken to the court, uh, Ramprasad Bismal and other people from the Kokori case. So they had that uh, uh, scarf of that color, the that uh, uh, what we call mustard color. And uh, then he improvised, okay, let us sing this song. So this was sung in, uh, by Ram Prashad Bismal. So because in the films it was adopted with Bhagat Singh, uh, but it, it is a song of great importance because that uh, mustard color is taken as the color of sacrifice when you leave all, all your own interests in favor of uh, the society. And that is, that is what it uh, virtually... Uh, and, and it has been improvised now for, for my, by the ladies in, uh, uh, in this Kasan movement. Ma meri chungi, chunni jidi hai wo... So, so that is a improvisation now. So thank you. Neelima ji, are you ready? Anji. Haji. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Perfect. That's Perfect. Bahut bahut shukriya, Samir, Shiri, Peace Vigil. Ye gana mera rangde basanti chola. Ham gaate hain. Aayi ho. ओ मेरा रंग दे ओ मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला ओए रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे बसंती चोला मेरा रंग दे ओ मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला ओए रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे बसंती चोला जिस चोले को पहन भगत सिंह खेले अपनी जान पे जिसे पहन सुख देव राजगुरु मिट गए अपनी आन पे आज उसी को पहन के निकला पहन के निकला आज उसी को पहन के निकला हम मस्तों का टोला मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे बसंती चोला जिस चोले को पहन उधम सिंह खेले अपनी जान पे 
जिसे पहन अशफा मिट गए अपनी आन पे आज उसी को पहन के निकला पहन के निकला आज उसी को पहन के निकला हम मस्तों का टोला मेरा रंग दे पसंदी चोला माए रंग दे पसंदी चोला बड़ा ही गहरा दाग है आरो जिसका गुलामी नाम है बड़ा ही गहरा दाग है आरो जिसका गुलामी नाम है उसका जीना भी क्या जीना जिसका देश गुलाम है उसका जीना भी क्या जीना जिसका देश गुलाम है सीने में जो दिल था यारो सीने में जो दिल था यारो आज बना वो शोला मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे बसंती चोला दम निकले इस देश की खातिर बस इतना अरमान है एक बार इस राह में मरना सौ जन्मों के समान है एक बार इस राह में मरना सौ जन्मों के समान है देख के वीरों की कुर्बानी देख के वीरों की कुर्बानी अपना दिल भी डोला मेरा रंग दे पसंदी चोला माए रंग दे पसंदी चोला मेरा रंग दे ओ मेरा रंग दे बसंती चोला होए रंग दे बसंती चोला माए रंग दे बसंती चोला इनकलाब जिंदाबाद 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 पानी का दिया हुआ नारा इनकलाब जिंदाबाद 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 नारे को सारी दुनिया में फैला दिया उनके साथियों शहीदों ने इनकलाब जिंदाबाद 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 Thank you so much, uh, Neelima ji and uh, Professor Shamsul Islam from Nishant Natya Manch, Delhi. Um, I would like to tell everybody that this was a very special treat. Uh, as you know, Nishant Natya Manch is internationally famous uh, for the street theater movement. Uh, they were uh, they began work in 1970s, early 1970s, went underground in emergency, and continued to do street theater work. Uh, so we are very thankful that they were able to sing for us. And uh, Shamsul Islam uh, was part of this uh, singing uh, with Neelima ji. Uh, who, and uh, Professor Islam, as you know, is an authority on uh, communal uh, politics agenda and uh, the two nation theory and uh, on RSS especially. So we are very fortunate to have him. I think we can stop the video of Neelima ji and uh, um, Shamsul Islam. Yeah, uh, they'll have to give you back um, the host, please. Reverse the host. Acha, uh. Neelima ji, you host uh, a right to give us the right. So, when you're doing it, I'll give you a question to the end. So, we'll give you a question to the end. Samir, aap zara, uh, Professor Islam, ko please tell us what to do. Okay. Ji. Uh, nay, uh, so on phone, I'm not entirely sure. Can you see something called panelists? Can you see participants? Yeah, panelists. Stop Sorry. video. Uh, nay, mute. Okay. Mute. Chalo, kardiya, but, Chalo, uh, koi, uh, um, no, we, we, we just want to, to change the host. So just so make Sami, anyone else the host. Uh, so Sami, do one thing. Can you contact them on WhatsApp while I okay, continue this sure. so that we don't waste time? Um, so thank you very much uh, for uh, this beautiful song. And uh, Ashok ji, thank you so much for uh, reminding us of this song uh, so that we could have it in this gathering today. Very uh, appropriate song for this gathering. 
before we move to our last segment, which is questions and answers, if there are any, uh, I would like you to um, send, uh, remember to please subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, join Good Things Happen To on Facebook and also like us on Facebook. ये जो गाना मैं आपके लिए गाऊंगी वो है ब्रिज मोहन का लिखा हुआ एंड व्हेन देयर इज सो मच पेन एंड मिजरी एंड सो मेनी ऑफ आर यंगस्टर्स अरेस्टेड स्पेशली अंडर यूएपीए एंड सो मेनी ऑफ द यंगस्टर्स हैव केसेस अगेंस्ट देम इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिमेंबर दैट देयर इज होप इन आवर लाइव्स एंड पीस विजुअल्स वर्क ऑलवेज कंसंट्रेट्स ऑन व्हाट वी कैन डू what is actually possible where we can make intervention whatever we can do so that we don't lose heart because uh, life does give us opportunities does give us ways to uh, intervene and make a difference so brij mohan ka ye gana hai ladte hue sipahi ka geet bano re लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे हार ना है मौत हार ना है मौत तुम जीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे फूलों से खिलना सीखो पंछी से उड़ना पेड़ों की छाओ बनके धरती से जुड़ना पर्वत से सीखो कैसे चोटी पे चढ़ना गेहूं के दानों सी प्रीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे जब बैठे बैठे आंखें भर आए दुख से तब सोच ना दिन कैसे बीतेंगे सुख से <coughs> दुख की लकीरें मिट जाएंगी मुख से सूरज सा उगने की रीत बनो रे सूरज सा उगने की रीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे माथे पे छल के भाई जब भी पसीना एक पल हवाओं के भी ओठों पे जीना फिर देख नारे कैसे धड़केगा सीना सीने में धड़के जो संगीत बनो रे सीने में धड़के जो संगीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे पाप का घड़ा तो आखिर फूटेगा भाई पापी किस किस से फिर छूटेगा भाई कोई लुटेरा कब तक लूटेगा भाई खून पसीने के गीत बनो रे खून पसीने के गीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे लड़ते हुए सिपाही का गीत बनो रे शुक्रिया फूलों से खिलना सीखो पंछी से उड़ना पेड़ों की छाव बनके धरती से जुड़ना पर्वत से सीखो कैसे चोटी पे चढ़ना गेहूं के दानों से प्रीत बनो रे इसी गीत के साथ मैं फ्लोर को ओपन करती हूँ if there are any questions uh, i think the whole idea thank you so much ashok ji thank you so much jagmohan singh ji doctor uh, thank you so much dr idris ji shukriya jyotsna thank you so much aradhita thank you so much uh, aap sab ka shukriya uh, uh, the point of this whole program 
is to understand that the youth have a responsibility uh, that everybody says but we also have to understand why the youth are so important in this struggle they are they are the ones who are on the front lines and it's because they have more faith and more hope uh, from life i will actually quote bhagat singh bhagat singh uh, wrote uh, this this beautiful thing uh, a beautiful letter to uh, sukhdev about love and uh, you know he he wrote in that in that letter that uh, uh, love always elevates the character of man it never lowers him provided love be love and che guevara uh, wrote also uh, i know he's from another part of the world but uh, you know we can learn from each other he he wrote at the risk of seeming ridiculous let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love it is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking this quality so let us not become sour let us not become um, uh, hopeless let us keep the hope let us keep the love uh, as bhagat singh said everything that concerns human kind concerns me so we must keep that spirit alive and uh, now if there are any questions uh, oh aradhita has a question is there any recent update on the farmers protest have every has everyone gotten bail uh jagmohan singh ji do you have anything to add to um the yes sir. yes uh we don't need to turn uh, your video on it's okay you okay, can just okay, speak no. yeah yeah uh, uh, it's a good news that uh, all those who were arrested they have got the bail uh that's very particularly, good particularly 26th january issue which was there so they have come out uh, and our lawyers have worked very well and court has also understood that how this fabrication is being done so that that is a good news thank you uh, dr jagmohan singh there is a question from samira mukhtar samir do you have Yes, um, Samira Mukhtar says the success of youth movements, as, you, as you've discussed today, lies in embracing non-violence as a strategy, and alliances with elite classes through the involvement of our youth. On the global stage, we see this with environmental movements. Could you comment on whether causes that may not have buy-in from the elite classes should endeavor to, in the absence of a better term, recruit elites? I think this is a question to me because this was a point that I was making, um, and I. Yeah, this is um yeah, this is a tough one because it's it's really, really getting to something that has been debated. It's been debated since the Paris Commune. We just had the anniversary of the Paris Commune of 1871, a few maybe it was yesterday the day before. And at that time also there was these massive questions about whether revolution can be led only by the working classes or does it need some kind of an alliance? Um, and listen, I'll just say, with all this history, the Paris Commune lasted a few months. Um, you know, the Soviet Union lasted a bit longer, and and some of the other. I have I have a long academic paper about this topic, but the short the short answer is, yeah, I think building as much um, cl inter class solidarity is probably necessary, um, but maybe not sufficient. I think that's the only short answer I can give. uh samir if i could add to this that uh, you know although of course bhagat singh uh, did not come from an elite family uh, but we must uh, remember that a lot of these revolutionaries uh, didn't necessarily come from poor backgrounds uh, you know bhagat singh uh, wasn't from a very rich family but he was from uh, you know a, a family that that had enough uh uh subhash chandra bose if i'm not mistaken uh, uh looking at what jagmohan singh ji has taught us in the la uh, last many webinars he came from a, a pretty well to do family uh, rabindranath tagore came from a very well to do family uh, jawaharlal nehru came from a very well to do family so i think it also depends on what time uh, in in the world history we are in and uh, whether people uh, have access to information and knowledge that makes them feel strongly about things so i think some some of it also has to do with the timing um another uh, question that is there is by shine kapoor 
Uh, and she says, thank you uh, for this session. It brings so much faith in speaking out and especially the fact that younger generation will guide the muted ones. I think it is important that Professor mentioned about courage. How can we do more from outside India when people are systematically asked to shut up? Uh, well, I think uh, the one thing is to amplify the issue which is there, because that is you can do there, because in India, they are trying to make it that uh, they would, and that is why India has been degraded by the Freedom House to a partially uh, dictatorial one. So outside, uh, I think uh, if we discuss those issues and we raise those issues of uh, human rights violations, because that is one charter, which is a universal one. And then like uh, another point is like they have a uh, declaration of rights of peasant and other rural workers of 2018. I think that is need to be focused that uh, the rural area is a very fragile in the particularly new liberalism policies. It is mostly neglected. So the, they must be listened. And that should be amplified, I think. Uh, we should share that uh, uh, they must be, because that declaration is a universal declaration. India is signatory to that. So by raising consciousness uh, yeah. broadly, uh, definitely helps the movement back there. Dr. Singh, one problem that we are facing that our volunteers are telling us in Australia and in Canada is the growing... Um, uh, violence even, not just uh, verbal abuse, but violence against the Sikh community. Uh, uh, so the diaspora, uh, one group of the diaspora is actually turning against the Sikhs uh, when it has come to this farmers movement. I would especially like Shine Kapoor to please tell us uh, what is happening, what are the kind of things she has heard in Canada, and then I would definitely like Professor Singh to talk a little bit about this, because this is a very sad and ugly situation in Australia and in Canada. Thank you. And thank you, Shireen. Um, I think, yes, there is like a visible polarization and it becomes so tricky because people who do not, uh, like people who are not Indians, they tend to follow uh, the message that's been passed on through the diaspora. So I know people and then they come to me and they talk about things that are not factually correct. and bashing those incorrect facts and telling them the reality. I feel that is so, it's important, but it's very superficial. Like how much effort are we, we are not just curtailing the information that's been uh, perpetrated through the government of India, but it's also by the people to the foreigners community in foreign countries. So, you know, and the foreigners, yes. They come yeah. from like not that uh, informed place. They just like, it's a hair say kind of thing for them. That is, that is true. Uh, the, the problem also in Australia that they're facing is that the social media is spreading these rumors about Sikhs and uh, people are attacking them. And I'm actually reminded of Jocelyn's article in which she said how uh, in 1984, the same thing had happened. Uh, you know, the rumors are spread and, and people turn against one community. Dr. Singh, you were part of the PUDR and PUCL report that was published in 1984, and you know the havoc that rumors can play. But here, the situation is extremely sad because the Indian diaspora, of course, you know, it's a minority in all these countries. Um, in Australia, I mean, in Canada, it's pretty big, but in other countries, it's smaller. And they are turning uh, against their own. Uh, actually, the root of that is, uh, uh, again, with the RSS. Because they have divided and they have uh, virtually poisoned, like uh, yesterday, the RSS chief only said one word and then silent. He says the farmers' uh, movement is very good, but those who are anti-Indian, they are not uh, allowing it to be settled. Now, who is anti-Indian? Is the 65% of the rural areas demand anti-Indian? 
but that that is one of the uh, thing that they polarize the mind and it is more polarized outside than now in india because the the this uh, freedom movement uh, well, this uh, farmers movement has virtually malab cut short that lines of uh, religious divide there is uh, no mal caste barriers barriers are broken so so is, uh, and there is a problem and uh, there is a very good book by uh, kbs sidhu uh, kbs uh, he was uh, one of the deputy of the ra that these people are created outside to create a, a sick problem because that is being responded also so that that is there is a, a agent group within the six also who are being formed that way and that is why when something happened in india they try to connect it that maybe it is supported by outsiders like uh, the, there is a and that's the problem it is not problem of the sick it is a problem of economic distress of the rural area that that is we have to say that it is not the sick sick because sick is predominantly there because is in agriculture but when when the maharashtrian come up in same number we don't uh, discuss about that so that despera is definitely divided and there is a bias uh, which uh, has been created like uh, uh, but now i think uh, most of those oci people will know that they are no longer being considered as indians all their rights have been withdrawn a property rights and everything so maybe that make them understand that uh, how that regime is virtually using to them because if they have any concern in india now they cannot dispose of their property that that's what the latest rule is because True. they have and to the, and and the, so, actually the bjp gets so much money and support from the west i wonder what the oci holders must be thinking now Uh, I also <laughs> want to ma- mention here, uh, Dr. Singh and Shine especially, that uh, you know the the killer of Lalit Makan, one of the killers, he uh, is on record saying recently I saw in a documentary that the Indian gov, uh, everybody was claiming that Pakistan was behind all this, you know, supporting the Khalistani movement and all this, and he says on record that actually that was nothing like that. There was no foreign hand. Uh, but again, that whole foreign hand conspiracy theory has been brought into uh, the the narrative, which is uh, extremely disturbing because now the whole thing uh, is again being turned into a uh, uh, Pakistan bashing, and you know that whole tension on the uh, on the on the border front, uh, which is really disturbing. Shine, are uh, you you said you wanted to add something? Would you like to say it? Yes, so um, I I kind of you know missed the point about the farmers' protest. So there are people who are non-Indians, and then they say that you know somewhere the farmers should give up because the government will not give up, and this comes from such an uninformed place. It's just a hearsay kind of a thing, and um, also there is one part, this part of it, where this kind of you know where we are trying to build a kind of support. for the farmers protest but on the other hand there are people who are non indians they, they don't come from like that kind of sensitivity but they say these kind of things and i think that affects the core uh, you know the uprising of this whole farmers pro uh, farmers uh, and anti farmers uh, regulations um, protest and the other part that i want to make is social media full of trolls yes there are people who are kind of who are uh, legislators here in canada like jagmeet singh is one of them and whenever he puts out a video or even lily singh um, they put out video i see like you know if you say okay good work please talk keep talking about it i see there are trolls they come back on your instagram feed or like sends you message and then they say like they abuse you or just digress from the core issue which gets i know you know it's important for us to kind of um, shut the trolls down but it gets distressing to see people digressing from the core topic i i totally understand uh, the frustration shine but i'm also very proud of uh, volunteers like you who keep on uh, talking uh, uh, sense <laughs> and trying to spread the message i think we need a little um, stronger strategy to deal with these yeah. trolls thank you um, 
yes one uh, yeah sorry jagmohan singh ji aap kuch keh rahe wo hai ke rana has put a very good question that in the name of bhagat singh people very easily get emotional or uh, attached but why are the people not ready to read and analyze singh's thought process i think so that's that's singh, a... i will just read his question once because we have a uh, visually impaired uh, uh, okay. people as well on the um, so so i'll just read yeah. it mayank krana says despite ample amount of literature available on bhagat singh in form of his real documents sir why we find bhagat singh more on the cars and t-shirts of the youth rather than his ideas in their young minds also sir what are the ways in which we can bring bhagat singh to the thinking of our youth apart from his figure in their emotions in the name of bhagat singh people very easily get emotional or attached but why are the people not ready to read and analyze and i'm sorry to say this will be our last question uh, and i think it's a very interesting question and very good uh, the problem is that how the bhagat singh has been built in our consciousness because first he was frozen to be a young man who just uh, uh, killed a police officer to revenge the elderly lala lajpat rai's death whereas bhagat singh well that's why i emphasize that maybe we have to make people understand it is 21 year bhagat singh with 18 years of uh, his colleague walks into the Uh, den of the imperialism and challenge them so so that is how the story was closed and that has been remained the narration for a long time till we brought out all his writings in one place and people learned about it that you no know, we are talking about a man who is very clear about his objective and and that is what we are trying to popularize and a lot more is now being understood about him uh, but still he has that emotional appeal that is why turban of his type and and even sometimes taking his photograph as you rightly said but this is also commercialization of bhagat singh which is done by the uh, the market also that how to sell <laughs> things so but but my emphasis is that they have to and that is what we are trying to make it so that it could be easily available to them in their own process of thinking that uh, what bhagat singh says what is the situation because situational learning is much faster than just going through it so that is why on particular issues and this was very interesting that how does he wrote about a, a expecting that a, a farmers movement will come up and liberate lot many peoples into a good Uh, future so i think uh, professor singh uh, uh, i also want you to mention how uh, somebody had approached you to make a coffee table <laughs> a book of bhagat singh <laughs> and how money uh, could be made with that so that that was with my cousin one of my cousin he was suggested by some people that you make it and get it uh, inaugurated by the prime minister and we will have the money so i said unfortunately uh, the prime minister at that time had a, a stigma of his own of uh, gujarat i say with, with those hands he cannot uh, touch the bhagat singh's notebook and similar comment i gave for manmohan singh also because in 2005 manmohan singh ka was called by bush to not have a, uh, a gas pipeline from iran and manishankar ayer was removed from the ministry and then he said that uh, uh, how could i help my monsanto and walmart can help and unfortunately happened that on 23rd march he was there in amritsar with sending a bus to uh, pakistan but he didn't talk about bhagat singh on his birthday he was in ludhiana he didn't talk about bhagat singh and then there was a special function kept Uh, in uh, nehru museum because mardula was uh, the director at that time and i, I he said that we want bhag i said no everybody those who are colleagues of bhag singh their 
families will come only then i will come so then all families were called and they were be to be honored by manmohan singh as prime minister and he didn't talk about bhagat singh and then somebody said i say whoever shakes a hand with uh, bush cannot uh, uh, see eye to eye with bhagat singh and that is what has happened now also that uh, the chandigarh airport it was uh, passed by the haryana uh, punjab assembly that it should be named after bhagat singh <laughs> and then they wanted to create uh, haryana wanted to, some other one's name over there which was rejected by the people then haryana as matlab jo uh, that legislative assembly also passed that this should be there but they have not named it because bhagat singh means dealing uh, with his policy of that slogan of down with imperialism long live revolution so so there is a there is a story yeah. so so that that is people like to commercialize it but at times uh, like uh, once uh, radha krishnan said that it is people say it is no use on uh, uh, weeping on the split milk but he say but your tears can add salt to the taste of the cat also so we can at ra- raise those issues which uh, can save bhagat singh from being further hijacked then making is presenting and even rss changed its stance that at one time they start saying bhagat singh is an intellectual so i say that okay these are his articles which should be read by everybody so that his intellectualism could be appreciated so i think that is a continuous yeah. struggle or battle for the young people that they don't get emotionalized but uh, imbibe the ex- experience of him as yeah. he imbibe yeah. the experience of gadar party uh, the uh, H- hra and other bengali revolutionaries so that is which made bhagat singh so now we we have to imbibe his spirit and he wrote a very interesting thing into uh, that you have to learn about strategy you learn from works and life of lenin so works and life is more important uh, that is we not only read but the way he presented uh, his views at that time and made a, a landmark which is now even france people are recognizing with that there is a person with revolutionary passion so thank, thank you thank you dr dr singh uh, very much i would like to conclude the program now uh, with one thought and one uh, comment by uh, by our um, participants and the thought is about this man uh, mandela uh, this is again a coffee table um, book <laughs> and unfortunately this is what has become of mandela in most homes we only remember him as somebody who was this great figure everybody knows he was a great figure he wore these uh, african shirts and you know he said some beautiful things but he has really become another commercialized uh, figure uh, what we many times fail to remember is that mandela was imprisoned as a young man just like many young people in india have been imprisoned today just like bhagat singh rajguru and sukhdev were imprisoned this man mandela was imprisoned for 27 years he lost uh, he lost all his youth in the jail and it will be a huge mistake and indeed a tragedy if we forget the struggles of these people who spent their entire youth for their countries and for the world uh, either in the prisons or being tortured some of them were killed at an early age like bhagat singh rajguru and satte is sukhdev in their early 20s it will be a huge shame if we let this sacrifice go to waste so wherever you are in whatever capacity you can please help all the information that uh, you can spread through your channels please help by uh, sharing what you learn with others please help organizations and institutions that are helping directly because your help is needed peace needs all of us without you this work cannot go on 
we need you to uh, form alliances we need you to please help us out wherever you can we as i said we have a, a youtube channel you can subscribe to it we you can join the facebook group good things happen to you can share your ideas with us don't forget that uh, together we can do this you know individually if we just keep complaining and not do anything uh, things will not move so let's not um, let the sacrifices and the efforts of the youth go in waste and uh, i thank you very much for all the beautiful messages you have sent us i will just end with one and then we will say good night and good afternoon and good morning wherever you guys are uh from mayank rana thank you so much sir i would like to say thank you to peace vigil and professor jagmohan singh for addressing my question would like to say thank you through a poem of punjabi revolutionary poet avtar singh pash though originally written in punjabi but this one is in is the hindi version bhagat singh ne pehli baar punjab ko jangli pan pehlwani va jahalat se buddhivad ki or moda tha जिस दिन फांसी दी गई उनकी कोठरी में लेनिन की किताब मिली जिसका एक पन्ना मुड़ा हुआ था पंजाब की जवानी को उसके आखिरी दिन से इस मुड़े पन्ने से बढ़ना है आगे चलना है आगे इनकलाब जिंदाबाद शांति अमन पीस आप सबको बाय बाय